So we are at 630. So I'm going to call the meeting to an order to order. We do not we have a quorum. We are missing two members this evening. Um, Deanna Polner um, is out and Dr. Bemis is out. Um, so we will make sure that we have that in the minutes for the next time. Um, there are no citizens present, um, but if there were, this would be the opportunity for them to address the board on any matter. Um, so we will move right to the regular session. So first thing we're going to do is um, review and take action on the meeting minutes of March 1st. And I'll ask if anybody has any changes or any questions before we ask for a motion to approve. No? Everybody good? Everyone's okay. good. Great. Um, so um, motion to approve. I make a motion to approve those minutes. And second? I'll second. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. I'm going to review and accept the shelter inspection performed by Dr. Bemis on August 7th. Um, Brian, did, I don't know if you had any um, preamble or uh, it looked like everything passed everything with flying colors. It's, it's our standard, uh, <laughs> standard inspection. The state has not made any uh, changes on that, so we okay. pass with flying colors. I have a question. Yes. It's more out of curiosity than anything. It's not anything anything that's going to stop this uh, second page yes number 32 do domestic ferrets have 24 access to water in a drinking bottle and to food um, do we take rodents we we well they're not rodents, but <laughs> they're not. the animal guy had to say Sorry that. if we just offended the ferret world. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, ferret people. No, we're not set up to take in any exotics at our shelter. But if we did, then that line item comes from somewhere long ago that some city did not take care of ferrets, evidently. So the state has that line item in there for the inspection. And, and if, we, if we did take in ferrets, it would be those smaller cages mm -hmm. where we put the, figured, the yeah. thing in between. Mm -hmm. And we would be able to thing. hang a, a water, we would, Similar be, to we would a have rabbit. the ability to hang a water bottle right. in there if, if needed. Right. Do we have a water bottle? I mean, I'm assuming we do because it says yes. Since we don't have that type of caging, I do not have any of those type of bottles. Okay. No. So would that hold true for a, a, a pet rabbit? It or, would. Um, would we put a rabbit in the shelter? I'm just, I'm curious, because I've never, I see them at HSNT, whatever, but yeah, I've not I, ever seen them. I think, that. unfortunately, the way they built the shelter, they built it for dogs, solely for dogs. Mm -hmm. They did. I mean, we could put a rabbit in a small cage. We could, but the we don't have rats. separation if a dog got out. So if you have small uh, animals like that mm -hmm. or cats they have to be in a separate room oh the whole room has to be separate correct right. okay yep so that an accident couldn't happen so, so somebody wouldn't... couldn't be holding the bunny and said bunny mm -hmm. fall on the ground and dog and dog. It could get under okay. the dog kennel the bigger ones right and we would have a horrific accident um so unfortunately okay. the way they built it they built it with extremely limited capabilities okay and that was pretty much on purpose so, but i didn't Thank you for the clarification. Sure. But w when they inspect, we have to answer all these questions. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the inspection? Okay. I will take a motion to accept uh, the shelter inspection as performed by Dr. Bemis on August 7th. Motion to accept. Second. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. All right. Next item on the agenda is to review and discuss the town's current impound fee of $10 and whether or not it should be increased and whether or not there should be um, a separate or additional fee for um, what I refer to as our frequent flyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, a few. <laughs> so, and we know them. <laughs> Let me know where they live. Yes, They're in my cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can try to return them. But 
I know you've done some research on that. So that's the yes. final page, guys. That was the final mm -hmm. page, and the actual research was done by Miss Deanna. I asked her to oh, nice. compile this for us, and she's sorry she couldn't be here to, to go over this. What does but, daily board mean, Brian? Sorry to interrupt. Yes, so a daily board is when a pet spends the night yeah. at a shelter. So it's cost per day. It's cost per day. I got you. So, uh, and as you can see here, we... Trophy Club, we do that $10 impound, and in our ordinances, we do a $10 charge per day. But here in Trophy Club, most of the time, an owner is picking up the dog the same day. Mm -hmm. So that $10 fee is what we're supposed to charge, and many times I do waive that fee because it is so minuscule. Uh, or if it's after hours and officers are here, I don't want them to worry about getting $10 cash and writing a receipt and that's something on the officers I don't think they need to worry about because of that fee. Um, so that said, we wanted to look around, and I assumed that other cities around us would be uh, higher. So she decided to, ch Deanna to, to decided to check Keller and Flower Mound. Um, those are the two closest shelters to us. Okay. With Roanoke using Keller, and then... Uh, yeah, actually, so the Keller fees would actually encompass uh, Roanoke, South Lake, Keller, and Colleyville. Correct. So it's, it's more than just two shelters. It's it or cities, excuse me. It's it's multiple cities. Um, silly question, and she may not have even asked this. Um, do we know how other cities collect the fees? So I. Mm -hmm. I, I do not know, but I know. When I used to work for the Grapevine Shelter, obviously that was a long time ago, it was cash or check. Uh, I don't know if city shelters use, do they take debit so, cards, credit, credit cards, payments, I don't know. Or like a Venmo or something. Right. Mm -hmm. If we could set something up so that it would be easier for the officers. That would be great. Yeah, because then you can just, you can validate, yep, I received yes. it, the dog's clear to go. Yes. I will check on that. Check yeah, because, that's got good checks and balances. It's what most rescues use is, is Venmo. Um, or in Zelle, they haven't really set up for businesses yet. But um, don't recommend Zelle. Don't re okay. We don't <laughs> recommend Zelle. I suck it all right Thank back you. in. Ven Venmo, Venmo <laughs> is better. Venmo is good. But, but I do think that, um, you know, we, we don't want to over over charge citizens. However, um, there is a service that comes with that mm -hmm. for keeping the animal safe. Um, and we do have residents who occasionally will hold on the dog onto the dogs for a period of time before we have to bring them into the shelter. So really when they're in coming into the shelter, they've really been missing for some time. Um, Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it should be comparable to what cities around us do. Um, and I do think when you look at the hours that are put in by volunteers, um, you know, we make sure that they're walked three to four times a day, mm -hmm. weekends, you know, when you're right. not here. Right. Um, and the cost of keeping food and those types of things um, available. Um, I do like the idea of a first, second, third, fourth offense fee. I think the ones for Keller are a little bit high. Um, the others go up at a smaller increment. Right. But I don't know, what What do you guys think? My thought on all of this, Susan, is, you know, and I've asked this before when we talked about money, is what's our budget look like? Because as far as I'm concerned, we're a borderline nonprofit if we aren't really one already, and if our current cost levels um, are enough to cover the, the food and other expenses, then to me that should be sufficient. Now, if that's not the case, then I think that would justify looking at an increase, but none of us other than Brian are in here to make a buck off this and I don't I, think I don't think that I think every city charges fees and we're not we're definitely not a nonprofit um, but 
um, the uh, budget um, pays for things like Brian's salary, um, uh, things that we do at Pet Fest, um, things like uh, washer and dryer that actually work, um, things that uh, the shelter needs or needs to replace. Um, I think that impound fees, um, those are charges directly to that resident. It's no different than them getting a speeding ticket or a parking ticket. Speeding and parking tickets don't, by any stretch of the imagination, and they never should be because it is against the law, um, pay for the fees of our police force. However, they're standard fees that people pay when those things happen and their dogs get out and somebody has to do something to make sure that they're kept safe. And I think in, 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 if in your opinion it's justified economically mm -hmm. to do this, then I'm for it. Okay. Um, but if not, then and it sounds like you are, so the if not really comes off the yeah, table. since I get a lot of those calls when Brian's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so I, as a volunteer, I go out and do the scanning and impounding and things like that so that officers don't have to come all the way back here to get a truck, to go all the way back to where the animal is, um, because there have been a handful of incidents where by the time those things happen, oh, the dog escaped my yard now. And so we have no idea where that dog is. So I think it's important um, for us to um, charge a fee for kind of the error that's occurred. And, and they can return and ask the pool company, lawn company, or whoever left whoever the gate the open to pony up for the fee that they had to pay because the dog got out. Because I'd say probably what, Brian, 85% of the time, it's the lawn company, the pool company. The kids. The, it, somebody left the gate open mm -hmm. and didn't close it when they left. Um, but it it doesn't mean that there isn't a cost associated with somebody's time and effort to go out there to take care of those things. So from an enforcement perspective, which is what I want to speak to, I think this helps hold people accountable because then when someone comes in, gets their dog, and has to pay, say, $20, mm -hmm. first offense, we say we say 20 I can tell them, okay, well, good luck with Fluffy, but I want to let you know. Mm -hmm. you know you're telling me that Fluffy is digging out because you have a dilapidated fence. Mm -hmm. If Fluffy comes in again, it's going to be 35. No, that makes sense. It, that and makes so sense. That, that gives me a conversation point to have with that owner. And then they usually will say, oh, I didn't, if he goes up, I say, yes, or it does. So better to invest that future money into fixing that fence so it, it helps me yeah because we don't want to see the dog back here again yeah. right because yeah it's not about money good points but it's about that enforcement I think and I, I agree I I like this the the increased amount for for, for the and, right repeat offenders frequent flyers, frequent flyers. <laughs> um, <laughs> to incentivize people to fix their fence or get their dog chipped or whatever it takes um, I think that most people here to know that their dog is safe would gladly not think twice about it. Um, yeah. my, my bug company came two weeks ago and opened my gate and latched it open all day long. Luckily, yeah. my dog's you know not going anywhere, but... Um, well, I, I do agree with Susan. If you just looked at these numbers, Keller is, that's out of our ballpark. Yeah, I think that's I mean, their fourth offense is <laughs> if we charge someone $100 because their dog got out four times, I think that person would tell us, well, you guys just keep the dog then. Yeah. And we don't want that. that. Exactly. You don't you want to so find a good balance. That's of, that's not reasonable. Yeah, I think the Keller impound fees are, significant, are, are too high for what, mm -hmm. what we do. I do agree with the daily board of ten dollars if they stay overnight. I, I do. From it's the a standpoint nice round of number and easier for us to keep. Well, and, of and and if you think about the time it takes to make sure the water's fresh, the, we've got food, and yeah. understanding that we now date our food, and so right. if it's over sixty days old, that's tossed and we open a new bag. Right. And so there's a cost associated in ensuring that we have something. We do need to do better protocol though. Um, but that's right. another day. Yeah. But because 
We shouldn't feed a dog on impound. Right. Mm -hmm. Water. Yes. But not food. Right. Because we don't know if there's an allergy, um, if di diabetes, um, any of those kinds of things, you know, going on that food could potentially cause harm versus good. Mm -hmm. If that dog is fat and happy, water. And, yeah. Water. And right. if they're there overnight, then we offer them food for sure. Okay. Right. So we just need to make sure that we do that. I just worry about those that come in that might have an, a medical issue that we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. And that and we should something for sure. Something can happen if you're overnight and none of us would know about it until Correct. we get in the next day. Yeah. So that water for sure. Yeah. And, and food if they're here, you know, overnight. But anyway, I, I agree. I like the stepped up fees for first, second, third, and fourth. Um, and hopefully that would encourage somebody to fix that fence or to not leave their dog out unattended overnight and he gets bored and goes and sits with a neighbor because he is lonely. Mm -hmm. um, his phone number's in my phone. <laughs> so where is, the, where is the trophy club proposed? Is so that? today is just a discussion okay. about I this. Gotcha. Yep. Um, it would have to go to council for approval, it, though. Okay. Yeah, right. Because Are it's you? A fee. Is this is this what we're currently doing? The trophy club. Yeah. Ten and it's ten. $10. Is it, and you're actually that's actually being collected. No. No. So because most of the time people are picking up mm -hmm. their dog same day, I don't feel that it warrants charging ten dollars. Yeah. So it's, and if, yeah, if the dog's in here five days, there probably isn't going to be anybody coming forward. Yeah. After 72 hours, they go what, for adoption. What we have found, right. Yeah, especially after five days. But if they're longer. here overnight or a day or two, we have had the occasional two or three day. Mm -hmm. or, right. Are they getting we charged $30? Are they getting charged then? I've done that a couple of times, yes. Yeah. Okay. And they write, if they write a check, it's to the Town of Trophy Club. Mm -hmm. right? And that gets put in the general fund. I don't think it gets put in my animal control budget. I don't honestly don't know. Well, it should. It should. Probably, it should. probably not. Yeah. And no. so. Most fees go into the general fund. Yeah. Most of the fines that we get from court and that head back into the general fund. Or if someone comes and pays for a permit to put in an outbuilding and they pay that permit fee, the general fund. Okay. I'm not 100% certain, but right. I'm so not sure any, any fees that are collected go into the general fund. Right. No. I don't think we have And for those that are watching this tape later on, um, Jeff Beach, Councilmember Beach, is in the audience, and he just mentioned that fees collected from things like permits or court fees or those kinds of things go into the general fund. So we'll validate that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we'll bring this back the next time, but with the ability to take action and make a recommendation to council um, so that they can approve or not. Okay. And um, it'll give the opportunity for Dr. Bemis and um, <coughs> Diana to, to weigh input. in on it. Yes. Yeah, also. Okay. So do we think that the flower mount fees are more in line or do we want to set our own? What do you guys think? I think Flower Mound would be closer in line with what, with what we I, want. I yeah. think it for would the be. size city we are. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think Town. so. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to make a change, and we've had some good points raised, I think that's reasonable. Okay. Yeah, the Flower Mound version. Yeah. yeah. I would keep the daily boarding at ten. And keep the daily boarding mm -hmm. at, at yeah. ten, and and then do the stair step of the first, second, third, fourth. Okay. Okay. Allows them to get a, the dog back, but it doesn't break the bank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so this is going to come back next meeting with the ability to make a recommendation. Okay, great. And then uh, next item, number four, Rashid Beba. Receive a shelter update from ACO Hall on impounds and pet registrations for the year so far. All right. So instead of just doing a big printout of everything, I just simply compiled it as you see there. Uh, so we're right in line where we were last year. 
We've done 17. We did 15 at this point a year ago. Uh, 14 of those were claimed by owner. We had three to rescue. Um, and then our total pet registrations, a little bit low. We were 10 more at this mm -hmm. time um, last year. Okay. But I'm hoping, as we will talk about Pet Fest shortly, that we get a lot more tags issued out. Mm -hmm. Usually Pet Fest is a good avenue for that. Was Pet Fest last year before that number 28 was logged or before? No, number 28 is the total in the entire year. Last right, year. but had Pet Fest already occurred? Um, just yeah, curious. We did quite a few at Pet Fest, I think, last oh, year. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, it had yeah. not occurred. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. apples to apples then? It is. Okay. And now, then the other great shelter update I want to let you all know is we are going to be purchasing a separate washer and dryer. The dryer will stack on top, but it is a full size, both units. Uh, we're installing the two, whatever the, the power for the dryer. Yep, 220. 220. We're installing a 220 Can plug. Can you believe I knew that? Uh, there you go. Great job. <laughs> and, uh, and the best news is that the monies are not coming out of my animal control budget for this because the city manager's office had a bunch of money that if we don't, we need to use it. So that's gonna get, that's gonna help pay for this. Yep. So very, very good. Yep, and for those that don't know, the current washing machine we have was the most idiotic purchase ever made, but that was by the recommendation of the, the group that built this facility. Um, it took over three hours to do a wash of yes. towels, yes, wash and dry them. It took over three it, hours. And, and, and now them. it doesn't dry. Ugh, we had to it hang them over the spins on shelter. But yeah. it doesn't dry them. Yeah. So I'm having to drape all the towels Worst over the Worst purchase dog ever. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, it looks like section eight and they're really long. Worst okay. purchase ever. Think of this short piece. I will have to get a step stool to go to the dryer. Hey, hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll purchase the step stool so that I can get to the dryer. <laughs> okay. The vertically challenged individuals. Yes. yes. Yeah. Those height challenged. Okay, great. That is good news. Um, thank you, Brian. And I know that, um, you know, we, we talk about reclaims of 14. There were probably that same number plus plus who are reunited as a result of social media yes, and things that we do. So residents now know a little bit about posting it on social media. We sometimes forget, call it the put, put, call it on emergency number, or put where the dog was found, um, yes. because we are big enough now that cross streets do matter. Um, but I would say 14 plus were, yes. were um, reclaimed before they ever even made it through the shelter doors, which is good. Yes. Yep. So that process still works. It does. Okay. Next item, discuss upcoming Pet Fest 2023 on October 7th. Uh, so, yes, our event's coming up. It'll be 9 to in the morning to 11. Uh, I have got uh, two tables for you and I, as always, and a canopy to be sitting under. And um, I will have a goodie bag, typical leash, tennis ball, brochure, um, making up a hundred of those in the next couple of weeks to hand out. Um, and either Miss London or Miss Karen is going to help us Great. Help do tags and things. So we should be ready to go. Is that on a Saturday? That is a Saturday. Yep. You said 9 to 11 a.m.? Yes, sir. And they're hoping for a big, a much bigger <coughs> turnout this year. Okay. The weather's yep. good. I have a, um, at the last meeting, you had mentioned that it was about time for us to collect more towels and blankets. And I... At the last meeting, <laughs> it was mentioned that it was time to collect more towels, towels and blankets for the shelter. And I thought it might be a good idea to put out a bin at Pet Fest and advertise that we would collect. That's a great idea. Um, and a big box or something. Okay. So, in addition to the social media posts that I always put out, I thought 
Sure. Yeah, we'll collect anything, right? Sure. I'll, Toys, I will, whatever. I have a bin. I will bring that. Okay. And if we can do some social media beforehand to let folks know, we'll have a little clean. drop off station. Clean. 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 Clean towels. Clean is good. What about food? I've got food. Donations. Uh, I'm skeptical about food going, especially a lot of times I'll get just that Ziploc bag full yeah. of food. Okay. Oh, my dog doesn't eat this anymore. What is it? Oh, I don't know. When you open it? When you open it? I don't know. So okay. I'd prefer we okay. continue to purchase our food. Or if yeah. I, you know, if they want to drop off treats. Yes. That are sealed. Yeah. Yes. I think, I think if we're going to do that, we should get with you so we get better treats. Yeah. Okay. So when you're out. I threw away all those bones from China. Yes. That are just Oh yeah. Those those awful. Go. Awful, awful, awful. Those awful. were awful. Yeah. Um, so I think if we made a list um, of the, the treats and perhaps canned food, because that typically has a oh, shelf yeah. life of twelve to twenty four months. I'll, I'll check. I do have so several your, cases of cans. Yeah, I'll, okay, check, so I'll it, check it out. So, but you know, let's decide which brand of right. treats we would like, okay. and so that we can have some consistency. Sure. Um, in the shelter and make sure it's a quality brand. And if we have overflow, there is um, uh, Roanoke. I think we'll take pet food. Roanoke Food Pantry does. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, if we have overflow, or you know, yep. one of the other yep. shelters. Yeah, we community always, storehouse, I think. Yes. Everybody started. And so there is, people yeah, there is a that. North Texas pet food bank as well. Yep, mm. don't forget to feed me. Okay. okay. And um, what I would like to, I'm going to ask you to put in your memory banks. Yes. Um, one of the things that I would like to do next year is get this date early and invite TCAP to come and do a um, microchip shot clinic okay okay they can have the truck in the parking lot and they can do a microchip and um shot clinic low-cost clock shot clinic right so i think that would be a good thing to do right and that wouldn't yeah. step on trophy club vandal hospital toes would it because i know no. they're they're always out there too no no it shouldn't and i mean i'll talk to dr speed um before i do anything yeah but i'm trying to get one on the books just a microchip yes um day with her okay. um, that we'll do in her parking lot on a couple hours on a Saturday. Yeah. We're just waiting for the weather to get a little cooler because right. we don't want dogs standing out there in this heat. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she, just microchips only. And the nice thing that her clinic does too is they um, implant and register. They do the register. Nice. Yes. They do everything at the same time so that the, well, the homeowner the doesn't parent, have to. parent doesn't have to do anything. So anyway, but, but next year, um, I'll talk to Dr. Speed, but, okay. but TCAP, great. you know, T, TCAP will come out and do it. Yeah. Um, they don't charge us for doing that. They just need advance notice. They book up pretty quick. Sure. Brian, have you put any chips in since you got I have, them? Yeah, I have implanted three or four. Should we include that on the shelter update? The I, I, di I didn't think about that, but I can. Because yes. we put the registrations on there. Right. Right. It'd just be nice to see. Sure. Definitely. Great. Yeah, because who, was it Abby or the little puppy? That we I chipped? think it was a little puppy. It was a little puppy. That yeah. we chipped, yes. Okay. All right. And um, I think my rescue took the three. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. All right. And two are adopted and one has a meet and greet. Oh, yes. wonderful. Very so, good. Okay, cool. All right, so some stuff to think about for next year, and I think that was the final item. So anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's go. All right. Great. Thanks, you guys.